Hi, you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel, and today I'm going to show you how to make a pumice filtration system. So, without further ado, I have here a Marineland C530. It's rated at 150 gallons. Um, I'm crazy enough that I'm going to put this on a 40 gallon tank because, frankly, I want to see if I can go for a year without actually servicing the filter. And pumice actually has that potential. So, I'm just opening this up basically in the state that I received it in the mail yesterday. I'll just put the top off, and uh, here we see the first filter tray layer. So there's a little vent layer here. You can see the, the kind of grill there to uh, keep the media isolated. And here's a bunch of media. So I got a, I got a waste basket over here, okay? And I'm just gonna chuck this in the waste basket, which is a really unfortunate way, because basically um, this stuff is not what we're gonna use. We're gonna use 100% pumice. Um, and, you know, by the way, I wish that I could buy this thing without having to buy all this media, but uh, at least at the moment, um, as, as far as I can see online, I was not able to buy it uh, without, uh, without preloaded media. So, so basically, as you can see, what I'm pulling out is these ceramic noodles. And the idea with these ceramic noodles is there's a lot of surface area so the bacteria can grow on it and, uh, and filter the ammonia out of your water. And uh, that, that makes some sense, but pumice, pumice is a volcanic rock and it has a lot of little air bubbles that are frozen in it because there's a lot of gases released in a volcanic eruption. And so basically this, this, this is, uh, kind of rock is so light that it actually floats. And um, as a result of all those little bubbles, it's very, very rough. In fact, it's, it's used as like a, uh, a scrubbing material for your, for your bathrooms and your sinks and so forth. But um, as a side effect of the roughness, it's got a huge surface area to volume ratio. So that means that you can fit many, many more bacteria per unit volume with pumice uh, than you can with these, these stupid ceramic noodles here uh, that, that had to be produced in a factory and, and now they're going to be destroyed because I don't think they can even be recycled, which is kind of a shame. So let's see here. Let's, let's try to pull this layer out. Maybe I'll just dump this in the waste basket. So much for that. And uh, okay, next layer. Next layer, we have a bunch of bio balls. So this is humanity's next attempt at biological filtration, which is equally pathetic. We're going to use some sort of high area, uh, surface area plastic bio balls uh, to, basically, to basically let bacteria grow, uh, which means that we're going to produce a whole bunch of plastic that sooner or later is going to get dumped and recycled. Um, and we shouldn't have to do that. But we have to, because it's nowhere near as effective as pumice, and it should probably never have been produced in the first place. So that's a, that's a loud message to you filter companies. Quit sending us this crap. All right. Now, as you can see, I have an empty filter canister here. I have a couple more layers, though. I have these, these uh, carbon, carbon, basically, uh, these bags of uh, activated carbon. And this is for removing toxic chemicals. Look, if you need activated carbon to neutralize toxic chemicals, you don't have biological balance. You got bigger fish to fry, no pun intended. Uh, so your filter shouldn't be responsible for that. And then here's these carbon pads. And these probably are effective for about three days to a week. And then, uh, you know, they're not so effective anymore. And that's another bunch of waste that we're producing that we don't need to. Okay, so now you'll notice, by the way, the bottom layer there is actually, in this case, and it's not true for all filters, but there's, there's kind of a tray here on the bottom, uh, kind, of, kind, of a, kind of a bunch of plastic slats. Um, so you can't, you can't actually put media all the way to the bottom, but almost. And as you can see on this one, on this layer, uh, the, the bottom is uh, completely blocked. So nothing can actually escape into the filter canister itself, which is good. Good design there. But basically what we're going to do is, basket by basket, we are going to fill this sucker with pumice. So the first thing I'm going to do, I got my trusty sprayer here. Oh, let me show you the pumice first. So this is uh, this is white pumice. Um, it's from Oregon. Most pumice is actually reddish because I, I believe it's because of the iron content. But this is white pumice, and uh, basically, I just happened to find this for for cheap on eBay. And uh, I was really afraid that it was going to completely screw up my water chemistry and the fish would die and all that. And it turns out that if you actually Follow my instructions, I think things will be okay unless you got really sensitive fish like discus. I admit I haven't tried that yet, but okay, I'm taking a sprayer, see this little sprayer, and I'm spraying inside this bag of pumice. It's, it's a huge bag, it's probably about a cubic foot, but it doesn't weigh more than like 20 pounds because of the, the air content that I was talking about. 
All right, so the reason I sprayed that down is because you definitely, you definitely don't want pumice in your lungs because uh, you can get a disease called silicosis, which is uh, serious stuff that you don't want to mess with. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically start filling the trays one by one. So because I've sprayed the pumice, uh, the dust is not coming up very much, and I'm able to work pretty quickly here. So, so basically, the whole idea behind this is that the filter in an aquarium, you know, historically we always think of it as a way to, to filter, right? To remove every little particle and every little toxin that the fish produce. But if you've got a healthy ecosystem, which, which you should have, then actually that's not very, that's not very important. Well, the most important thing is, is removing ammonia. Um, because in nature, water, water that churns over the sand and so forth actually removes a lot of the ammonia. It's not just the plants that are doing that. Um, so the most important feature of a filter is to, is to do the roll of, of sand on the bottom that's kind of rolling back and forth with the tide in a river, um, but not, not so much to, to remove all of the microfauna. So in, in any healthy aquarium, quite honestly, there's going to be bacteria, there's going to be viruses, there's going to be parasites and whatnot that are floating in the water. Now, obviously, if they get out of control, then you get disease. But in very low levels, they're actually part of the ecosystem. And speaking as somebody who has actually spent part of his life swimming in natural lakes and rivers, I can tell you that under the best of conditions, there is a visible kind of, for lack of a better term, like dust uh, present in, in those bodies of water that you see when you're swimming down there with a mask. So it's perfectly natural to have a little bit of, of dust, so to speak, in your aquarium. Um, and I think that if, if you can get over this aesthetic kind of chasm and the aesthetic chasm is that that humanity has this this notion of a beautiful aquarium as a crystal clear aquarium but but that's not really the way nature works it's very clear but it's got a little bit of microfauna in it and a little bit of debris in it and if you can make that aesthetic leap in your mind then basically basically pumice filtration will give you everything you ever dreamed because what it will do because there are a lot of gaps between the pumice Basically, the, the filter doesn't get clogged for a very long period of time. I, I actually, I've been running my my uh, 35 gallon hex tank on I guess about uh, what like a, a 100 100 gallon. No, I'm sorry, a 70 75 gallon filter. And this 75 gallon filter has been running for two months. The water looks beautiful, and I still haven't changed the water apart from topping it off for evaporation. So that that's why I'm using this 150 gallon uh, Marineland C530 on my 40 gallon fish tank because I'm, I'm hoping not to change it for a year. So again, because of the gaps between the pumice, basically what, what happens is that um, we are able to prevent clogging the filter because all we're really looking to do, and I have to emphasize this, is, is neutralize ammonia. So ammonia is gonna get converted into ammonium, uh, ammonium and nitrite and nitrate. And, and basically uh, nitrate in particular is much less toxic to fish than ammonia, but plants are perfectly happy with it and, and, and they can grow. Um, so that's the goal here. So basically, I'm not gonna tell you that the only thing you need to keep your tank clean and healthy is a pumice filter, but it is about the only thing you need to keep your ammonia at a sane level, unless you're doing something totally crazy like massively overstocking the tank. Um, so anyhow, um, I'm filling up this first layer and I wanna, I wanna get it right to the top but I don't want to be so high that, uh, that I push up the, uh, the kind of grill layer here, the, pl the plastic grill that I'm going to put back on, um, which in this case actually comes at the bottom of the next layer. You see that that's, uh, water can pass through this, right? It's, a, it's like a vent. It's like an air, air conditioner vent sort of thing. Um, so if I can put that down snugly, oh, you can see I still got an enormous amount of space. So I, I can put probably another, what, centimeter or something in there. So I'm just shoving this stuff in. Now, I bet you're thinking, uh, this is really crazy because all of this particulate is gonna shoot out into the water and then it's gonna clog the impeller and everything else. Well, if I just left it like this, yeah, you're probably right. Um, but we're not gonna do that. Um, first of all, this is the bottom layer. So not a lot of this is gonna get kicked up into the impeller or anything like that. It's gonna tend to stay down here. But as we get to higher layers that, that actually don't have the entire bottom blocked off like this bottom layer does, we'll actually shoot water through it so that we can get a lot of the smaller particulate out. 
Um, and you just have to make sure you don't clog your drain when you're doing that. I, I guess you could kind of hose it off into the garden or a bucket or something. Um, and, and yes, when you first run it, uh, the water is going to fill with like a cloud of white, kind of like talcum powder, which is terrible for your fish. So, so what you actually want to do is the first time that, that you run the canister filter, um, you actually want to run it in the sink. So you're cycling sink water. Um, and then, you know, you do that a few times, and then once that starts looking clear, then you take, um, you take some, uh, like a, a sponge from an old filter or, or some kind of, you know, floss from an old filter that's got a bunch of fish crap on it, and basically a bunch of nitrifying bacteria, and, and you want to squeeze that into, uh, ideally, into each layer um, of the pumice filter to kind of seed it with bacteria. But if, if you just squeeze a little of it into the top layer, eventually those bacteria will propagate all the way on down uh, through each layer. Um, because we need those nitrifying bacteria. If, if you just take this plain old pumice and you and you go ahead and you put this in a um, you, you put this in a tank, what's going to happen? Let me close my disposer there because I don't want these pumice particles going in my disposer. That'd be a disaster. Um, what, what's going to happen is uh, nothing because you don't have any capacity to neutralize that ammonia. So so we've got to get that. Um, that those bacteria seeded. Now, if you don't seed the bacteria, eventually they'll find their way in anyway, but it's going to take a lot longer. And in the meantime, you're going to suffer ammonia spikes and so forth. Um, so let's see what happens here. It's going to rinse out off a bit. Now, some filters actually have uh, the vent slats in the very bottom as well, which is convenient because that means that I can actually pull this tray out and much more easily wash the uh, pumice out of it. By the way, what's going to happen um, once you start running this, even, even after you've kind of kind of got rid of most of the particulate and so forth, once, once you start running a pumice filter, um, you're going to notice for the first couple of weeks two things. First of all, your water is going to be kind of cloudy looking. Um, you know what? You're just going to have to change your water a few times, and eventually it'll start to clear up and it'll stay that way. Um, the second thing that you'll notice, though, is that little small um, pieces of pumice actually float on the top of the water. So they actually get sucked into the impeller, which obviously is not the greatest thing, but it's kind of unavoidable. And, and then they got shot out. They get shot out the, uh, the outlet pipe. And, and so you'll find little pieces of pumice basically floating in your tank. What I recommend is take like a little plastic cup and suck them out of the water like that. Don't try to use a net. It's kind of difficult and definitely be very careful the first few weeks when, when you actually scrub your, um, your glass, if you want to clean your glass, because if you get a piece of pumice between your sponge and the glass, you're going to put a massive scratch in that glass. And certainly if you've got acrylic, that's a serious hazard. So, so you want to be mindful of that. Um, but if you follow those rules, after a week or two, things should stabilize quite nicely, provided, of course, that you do have a good ecosystem, you know, with tons of plants. Um, I can't recommend for or against this in marine tanks because I haven't tried it, but I'm sure there's marine heads out there uh, who, would, who would be able to advise one way or the other. I can tell you, though, that if you have a great freshwater tank with healthy balance otherwise, that this should be a very effective way to keep your tank clean for a long, long time. But again, there is some kind of consideration we have to give to uh, discus and super sensitive fish that like very, very alkaline, very, very, I'm sorry, very acid, very soft conditions because potentially, depending on the exact kind of pumice you have, um, you know, this, this may affect your water chemistry. In, in my case, except for the initial couple of weeks where it's, it's spitting out a bit of cloudy, cloudy material, um, it does not at all affect water chemistry in the long term. In fact, it, it improves it because it keeps the ammonia li literally at undetectable levels. Whereas uh, in my crowded tanks, I used to be, you know, uh, barely detectable with, a, uh, this is a, with an API liquid chemistry set. But, uh, anyway, um, that's the basic idea. So um, I, I, I would I would emphasize as well. I mean, part of the goal part of the goal of fish keeping in general is is just to observe the beauty of nature right before our eyes, and and not to forget how important it is that we maintain you know the real the greater nature out there. And uh, part of that is getting away from a lot of materials that we don't need and a lot of excess we don't need. And, and frankly, a lot of wasted time and effort doing doing filter maintenance. And and part of part of the goal here is to eliminate a lot of that. Now, if you're wondering, you know, where did I get this idea? 
Well, I, I could I could probably I probably uh, was told about this at some point on and off. I seem to remember vaguely people telling me this or that about pumice. But what really kicked it off is I was talking to this guy in a pet store. He was actually the manager of this pet store, you know, that sells filter supplies and all that. And he was telling me about, about a salt tank. Now, I, I don't know anything about salt tanks. I'm a total freshwater head. So he, he was telling me, well, you know, I haven't changed uh, the water on this 150-gallon salt tank in six months. And I'm like, are you freaking crazy? It must be a disaster. He said, no. I, so I asked him how he did it. And he said, well, I have this huge tank. It's like 20 or 30-gallon tank under under this 150 gallon and it's it's his you know his sump tank and he's got just pounds and pounds of crushed live rock in there so the live rock is basically neutralizing all the ammonia and it was after talking to him and, and working through some of my own filter frustrations that it finally dawned on me hey what if i just took all of the standard media out of these stupid filters got rid of all the synthetic junk and put pumice in it you know i wonder if i could replicate what he did and of course I was totally disappointed because as soon as I plugged the filter in after washing it for a couple of hours, you know, the whole tank looked cloudy, the fish weren't that happy, I had to do like three emergency water changes. But lo and behold, after a couple of weeks, it really stabilized. And, and like I said, on my, on my 35 gallon hex uh, with the big canister, I have not changed the water other than, other than top off in two months and the water looks beautiful. I, I will, by the way, be giving you a, a tank tour later. But I wanted to get this out of the way because this is a big part uh, of, of my secret as to how I, I maintain water quality uh, without wasting a lot of resources and, and time, frankly. So I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this. I think you get the idea. But the important point is when you're done with all of this, you've got to make sure, number one, tr try, to, try to drain out. Here, I'll show you what I mean by that. Try to drain out all of this stupid particulate. And draining it into the filter isn't going to help you much. So we'll take it out of the filter. Try to rinse it off, you know, look and see, are you, yeah, I'm putting out a whole bunch of gray water. So obviously that, that means I need to do more washing and more washing uh, for a while here. Uh, but then when you think you've got it clean, run it in the sink. You know, connect the hoses, just hold the hoses into the sink, prime, prime the canister filter and cycle it and empty the sink and fill the sink and empty it and fill it until the sink looks really clear, okay? And then remember, you have to seed it with bacteria from an existing filter. Heck, go to your local pet store, pay the guy a dollar or something to get one of his discarded uh, filter, filter cartridges, right? Or get it for free. Um, and use that as your source of uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria if you don't have any other tank source. But that's, but that's critical. Um, or, or if you don't want to add fish to your tank and you just want to cycle it for a few weeks first and let the bacteria build up, I suppose that's another way to do it. Um, but anyway... There you go. I, I hope this has been useful. And um, if you have any comments or questions, um, y'all can talk about it in the YouTube comments. Have a good day.